Welcome to the Engineering Workshop. I'm Hunter White. I'm a degree in Mechanical Engineer from Georgia Tech, and today we're going to work through the engineering design process to build this miter saw stand. My problem statement is to design and build a workstation around a Bosch miter saw with integrated dust collection, tool storage, and will fit in a standard two car garage. You'll see here my garage has been modeled in SketchUp and I want the miter saw station to sit right there. For my background research, I watched a lot of YouTube videos from fellow makers and found the extreme miter saw station. In that build, I like the cutout around the miter saw. From I like to make stuff, I liked his dust capture box to improve dust collection. And from Shop Nation, I liked his use of the IVAC ecosystem to automate the dust collection in his miter station. I broke my specific requirements up into three sections, construction, tools, and dust collection. Highlighting some products I'm going to use to meet these requirements. I'm going to use Rockler's leveling feet to keep the workbenches level across multiple garage surfaces. And I found some smart lights on Amazon that I'm going to use to light the workbench. To automate the dust collection, I'm going to use the IVAC ecosystem, specifically with the IVAC Pro switch and blast gates. And for a dust collector, I'm going to use the new Dustrite mobile dust collection system. This will include a chip separator and should be easily maneuverable around the shop when I move and I can reset up the miter station with dust collection. And it is flexible so I can add new components as I go on. I use SketchUp to prototype my miter station. It's composed of the miter saw stand in the middle and two flanking benches on either side. And I use layout to help build the engineering plans to aid in the process. In part one, we're going to build the miter saw stand itself. You can see I've included a dust hood for improved dust collection and support wings on either side of the miter saw to allow for full range of motion of miter cuts and bevel cuts and four inch holes on either side to allow for the integration of dust collection. The first step is to build the frame and I'm doing this from construction two by fours and I chose this method as opposed to like three quarter inch plywood because I want the frame to be really durable and sturdy. Um, I serve in the army and I move about every three years and I want to be able to set this miter saw station up in the next garage that I go to and I don't want the movers to break it. When using construction lumber I like to mill the dimensions myself. I try to make them 1.5 inches thick by 3 inches wide. This makes the construction a lot easier. All the tolerances are a lot tighter. And for making the joinery, it goes together a lot easier. Because 2x4s come at 1.5 inches thick, they end up coming out a little thinner, which is not too much of a problem. I'm assembling the frame with wood glue, half lap joints, and pocket hole joints to make everything sturdy and square. I'll then sheet the frame in plywood to seal everything off. I use a dado stack and a crosscut sled on the table saw to cut the half lap joints. This makes everything stable, safe, and more importantly, it comes out really square. I really like how this method works. Um, I'm then using the Craig pocket hole jig to cut pocket holes and all the parts from the cut list before assembly. Assembly is where all our work dimensioning and milling our lumber and our joints really pays off. As you can see here, these half lap joints come together very square. They're very stable. Um, and ultimately, they're very strong. They're a great way to join two pieces of wood. And I'll use this method to build a left and a right side of the frame. Uh, I'll build like a square, as you kind of see here, and that makes the left side of the frame. Um, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm using a carpenter square to make sure that all the joints come together at 90 degrees. Um, I do this on every single side. And the, this turns out a really nice finished product. So everything came out really square. I join the left and right side of the frames with the stretchers using pocket hole joinery and some glue and then I support those stretchers with braces that go in between there as you can see. I drilled pocket holes in the top pieces of the frame to allow me to attach the oak plywood that I'm going to use for the top of the miter saw stand. Uh, this makes it really easy and it's nice and clean. Because the frame provides all the structural integrity needed for the miter saw stand, I can get away with using quarter inch plywood to seal it up. So to do that I'm cutting a rabbit joint in the sides of the frame so that the quarter inch plywood will sit flush with the outside edges. This gives it a really clean look. The next step is to cut the top for the miter saw stand. I'm using three quarter inch oak plywood because it's very durable and it'll be a long lasting bench top for this miter saw stand. A construction note, cut the dimensions a little bit wide so that you can come back through with a flush trim bit on the router and cut everything flush to the frame. To attach it to the frame, just using wood glue, some counterweight, and then clamps. And because I planned for this, 
I'm gonna use pocket holes from the underside of the frame to attach that plywood. Uh, this is really nice because then I don't have any plywood screw or any screws going through the top of the plywood. And then I use the flush trim bit in the router to get the top flush with the frame. This gives it a really nice clean look and everything comes out wonderful. The next step is to make the dust trap. This is made of half inch birch plywood and will sit in the back of the frame. This will work in conjunction with the dust collection system and the dust hood to use gravity to trap dust behind the miter saw. This is as simple as cutting all the pieces out on the table saw and then either using a jigsaw or a skill saw to make those angled cuts. Um, I'm using screws and wood glue to hold this together. It doesn't necessarily have to be airtight, um, but I will come back with some caulk to seal it up to just help with the dust collection so I don't have any leaks. I use a scroll saw and some serious tongue action to cut a four inch hole for the bottom of that dust trap so I can attach the dust collection hosing. And as you can see, everything is coming out just as planned. Next, I cut all the quarter inch birch plywood and pre-drill and countersink screws and then attach it into those rabbit joints that I cut into the frame. The method of insetting the plywood into the frame came out looking really clean. It matches the model and I think it was a good alternative to use 2x4s rather than plywood for the structural integrity of the piece. The next step is to build the dust hood base at a dimension 2x4s. This will surround the dust trap. I'll cut a half inch dado in the top to allow for the plywood to fit down in there. I'll then attach trim pieces to the top and bottom of the dust hood with a half quarter inch dado cut in that which will allow quarter inch polycarbonate doors to slide in and out. This should trap all the dust behind the miter saw and then when you want to make beveled cuts or mitered cuts you can slide the doors out of the way from to the left or to the right. I'm securing the base of the dust hood to the top of the miter saw stand with only pocket screws. This will allow me to take the entire dust hood off if I ever need to or if I need to move the miter saw stand and I'm worried about it breaking. Next, I'm going to build the wing supports for the top of the miter saw stand. These are going to be dual purpose. First, they're going to support material when it's up on the miter saw and bridge the gap to the flanking benches so everything will be the same height. And also, they're going to act as little storage cubbies on the left and right of the saw. These are pretty easy to put together. Just cut them out on the table saw and then use the miter saw to cut those angled pieces. Just be sure you get your pocket holes in the right orientation so you don't have to take them apart and do it again. Uh, but as you can see, they came out really nice. Um, I haven't built the inner cubbies yet or the inner drawers yet um, because I don't have the polycarbonate. After I got all the dust hood pieces cut on the table saw, I just assemble them with some glue and nails. I wanna point out the pocket holes on the back side of the dust hood this allowed me to secure it into the base. I didn't use any glue in the base in case I ever wanted to remove the dust hood from the base, even though I planned to be able to remove the base from the miter saw stand itself. And the moment we've all been waiting for, checking to make sure that everything comes out level and even. One of the final steps to part one is to attach the doors. I'm gonna use inset soft close hinges and I got a Craig jig to assist with that. And then I built my own little jig to assist with drilling in the other side of those hinges into the frame. So I go through all the trouble of building this jig and then I use it the wrong way and drill the holes in the wrong spot. And of course, Oh, the holes are right on top of each other, so that'll work out well. Okay. And for whatever reason, which should have been very easy, it was just like a bridge too far, and this took me forever to get these doors on. But they look really great, and they work really well. It's the same three-quarter inch oak plywood I used for the top. Final step, installing some oak trim just to clean everything up. Well, this is where I'm going to end part one of the build. I think everything looks really great. It looks just as I had modeled it. Still waiting on the polycarbonate so that I can make the dust hood doors. I want to use polycarbonate so I can see through it. So this will allow for smart lighting to kind of come through the saw and so that I can look back behind the saw in case any small pieces fall back in there. Well, this concludes part one of the Meyer Station build. Really happy with how everything came out. 
Uh, I think the dust port is going or the dust trap is going to work really well. I'm still waiting on um, polycarbonate, so these uh, doors in here will be clear, and then I'll pull drawer pulls so that uh, when you want to do like an angled cut or something like this, you'll be able to pull the door out of the way, um, as well as making uh, mitered cuts as well. If you lean the saw over, this door should be able to pull out of the way. Um, that would be nice because I don't want to be, have to like take the doors off and then find a place to store them temporarily. So they should just stay. There's a quarter inch dados cut into this trim piece and this trim piece and then the uh, door will slide out. But um, So still got to do that. Still got to hook up the dust collection. Um, I initially planned to put the dust collection under the saw using the, the Brockler uh, 650 uh, cubic feet a minute um, dust collector. But I just don't think that there's going to be enough room. And then also, it wouldn't be able to breathe. Uh, you know, it's going to pull 650 cubic feet of air into the in from this top, and it's going to have to blow it out somewhere. And I just kind of imagined that uh, this being not airtight, but somewhat airtight, um, that it would just end up blowing the doors open. And I just didn't want to deal with that. So I ended up getting the, the new 750 cubic feet a minute standalone Rockler, like mobile dust collection system. Um, that should be pretty cool. It's kind of a new product and I'm excited to get it and then review it. Um, but so I'm gonna run that in the corner of the shop and then just run four inch hosing in through uh, this side here. And then uh, it'll come in and come up the bottom. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited with how it came out and excited to get the two flanking benches built. Uh, and then so that I can have uh, the rest of this workspace. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please leave a like and a comment. Uh, let me know what you like about it. Also, uh, super curious for anyone that ends up buying the plans. Uh, let me know how that works out for you. And if there's any corrections or errors that you think need to be made, put them in the comments so that other people that are using the plans, that'll probably be the best way for them to find um, kind of the, the crowdsourcing of, of this. Um, I did make a lot of corrections as I went through the plans initially, so they should be pretty good. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, let me know if there's anything that you found in your Meyer station that you could would recommend, like adjusting this one. I'm excited to get everything uh, working and using it. Um, but yeah, anyway, let me know. I'll see you next time in part two.